In this presentation, we will take a focused look at pharmacologic agents utilized in critically ill patients for pain management. We will use the most recent Society of Critical Care Medicine guidelines for pain, agitation, sedation, delirium, immobility, and sleep disruption, known as PODIES, that was updated in 2018, to serve as the framework for this presentation. The basic principles of pain management in the ICU involve employing an assessment-driven and protocol-based approach. This approach should be holistic, utilizing standardized assessment tools and a combination of non-pharmacological and pharmacological interventions. To enhance the quality of analgesia and reduce side effects, a stepwise multimodal approach to pain management should be implemented. Furthermore, it is important to prioritize analgesia before sedation to minimize the use of sedatives. Special attention should be given to tailoring an individually adapted analgesic regimen, titrating the dosage to specific personalized goals using the lowest effective amount. In the management of pain in the ICU, a combination of non-opiate and opioid analgesic agents may be used to minimize the need of opioids and decrease the side effects associated with higher dosages of opioids. There are three classic opioid receptors, in addition to the novel NOP receptor. Stimulation of MOP receptors, also known as the MU receptor, result in analgesia, sedation, respiratory depression, bradycardia, nausea or vomiting, constipation, tolerance, and addiction. This is the most common receptor that opioids bind to produce analgesia in the central and peripheral nervous system. DOP or delta receptor agonists result in reduced gastric motility and spinal and supraspinal analgesia, however this effect is limited to pro-inflammatory states. KOP or kappa receptor agonists produce spinal analgesia, diuresis, and dysphoria. And NOP, or the noreceptin receptor, in the spinal region, can produce analgesia and hyperalgesia and supraspinally, it is thought to produce a pronociceptive antianalgesic effect. This graph shows the relative strength of different opioid agents, compared to morphine, among the opioids that are more commonly used in clinical practice. As you see, oxycodone is 1.5 times more potent than morphine, hydromorphone is 5 to 7 times more potent than morphine, and fentanyl is 80 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Fentanyl is one of the most commonly used opioids in the ICU, and it is a synthetic opioid. It is a mu agonist with a quick onset of 1 to 2 minutes and a relatively short half-life of 2 to 4 hours. Of note, fentanyl is highly lipophilic, resulting in quick diffusion between the blood and CNS. With prolonged use, it can accumulate in adipose tissue resulting in protracted clearance. Because it is metabolized in the liver, additional accumulation can occur in hepatic impairment, however, there is no recommendation for dose adjustment in these patients for intravenous use. Fentanyl has affinity for both 5-HT1A and 5-HT2A receptors and is a weak serotonin reuptake inhibitor, so concomitant use with SSRIs, SNRIs, and MAOIs may place a patient at increased risk for serotonin syndrome. Hydromorphone is a semisynthetic opioid agonist derived from morphine. While it primarily actives on the mu receptors, it activates the delta and kappa receptors to a lesser extent and may be associated with more euphoria, due to the effects from the kappa receptors. Onset is slightly longer compared to fentanyl at 5 to 15 minutes, with a similar half-life of 2 to 3 hours. Accumulation can be seen with renal and hepatic impairment, and intravenous doses should be reduced by 50% in patients with a creatinine clearance less than 60 ml per minute and 25 to 50 percent in patients with moderate to severe hepatic impairment. Approximately 37 percent of hydromorphone is metabolized to hydromorphone-3-glucuronide which is a neuroexcitatory metabolite that accumulates in renal failure. Morphine is a mu agonist that goes through glucuronidation. It has a similar half-life compared to hydromorphone. In renal impairment with a creatinine clearance less than 60 ml per minute, Reduce the dose by 25 to 75 percent and avoid in patients with a creatinine clearance less than 15 milliliters per minute. Morphine can accumulate in hepatic impairment, however, there are no specific dose adjustments, 
but keep in mind that the half-life and AUC are increased in cirrhosis. Morphine 3-glucuronide M3G and morphine 6-glucuronide M6G are the major metabolites of morphine. M3G is neuroexcitatory and can increase risk of delirium. Morphine also causes a histamine release resulting in flushing and hypotension. Due to these side effects morphine is not commonly used in the ICU for pain and sedation. Non-opiate analgesics can be used to minimize the need for opioids, thereby mitigating potential adverse effects related to opioids. Acetaminophen should be used as an adjunct to an opioid to decrease pain intensity and opioid consumption. It can be used as an analgesic and antipyretic. Doses should be capped at 4,000 mg per day, and in hepatic impairment, limit doses to 2,000 mg per day. Ketamine is an NMDA receptor blocking agent and a dissociative anesthetic with neurostimulatory side effects. Low doses of ketamine can attenuate tolerance to opioids, and the POTI's guidelines recommend use of low dose ketamine, 1 to 2 micrograms per kg per min, to reduce opioid requirements. Gabapentin and other neuropathic pain medications should be used for neuropathic pain management. Gabapentin has a high affinity for voltage-gated calcium channels located presynaptically and may modulate the release of excitatory neurotransmitters. Uptitrate slowly as it can cause increased sedation. Of note, abrupt discontinuation can result in withdrawal symptoms, so it is important to review patients' home medication lists and restart as able. It is renally excreted, so gabapentin dose needs to be renally adjusted. NSAIDs can be considered as an alternative to opioids for pain management during discrete and infrequent procedures. Ketorolac can be used for up to five days in patients with no renal dysfunction or risk of GI bleeding. That is it for pain management. Thanks for watching, I will see you next in Agitation Assessment and Sedation Management section.